CBS, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Just a few blocks away from Baltimore's beautiful Inner Harbor is Camden Yards. And that's where we are for the second game of this doubleheader as the fans are making their way to their seats as the Yankees will take on the Baltimore Orioles right here on Yes in the second game of this doubleheader. Hi everybody, Ken Singleton along with John Flaherty. The Yankees are trying to salvage a game in this doubleheader. They lost the first one, an exciting 5-4 victory for the Orioles. They held on in the ninth inning. Flash, let's take a look at some of the key plays of the first game. You know what, Kenny? It was kind of an interesting game for CeCe Sabathia. The first three innings, he was locked and loaded because he got an early lead. John Carlos Stanton hitting a solo shot to left field, a hard line drive, and the Yankees are on the board. But in the fourth inning, Mark Trumbo touches him up for a two-run shot. Yankees still had the lead at that point. Easy fifth inning for Sabathi, and then he came out in the sixth and was laboring. And this really was a difference in the ball game. A three-run home run by Valencia gave them the lead, and they were able to hold on. Orioles win the first game 5-4. Here are the starters in the second game, brought to you by People's United Bank. Jeffrey Ramirez will get the start for the Orioles. The rookie is 0-2. And Luis Sessa is added to the roster. Brandon Drury sent to the minor leagues, and Sessa gets the start. So the Yankees and the Orioles coming up in game two of this doubleheader. The Yankees trying to salvage a split right here in Baltimore. It's all coming up right here on Yes. Brought to you in part by Subway. Try a signature wrap at Subway restaurants today. By People's United Bank. No mascot, but lots of fans. Member FDIC. And by your local Kia dealers. Visit KiaDealers.com to learn more. That is the Inner Harbor, and it uh, 
this time of year it's very busy. Let's take a look at the Yankees starting lineup for game two of this doubleheader. Leading off, Brett Gardner will be in center field. Aaron Judge is a DH in game two. DJ Gorris will be at shortstop. Carlos Stanton will be in right field. Greg Bird takes over at first base. Miguel Andujar will be at third. Clint Frazier in left field. Austin Romine doing the catching and batting ninth and playing second base. Neil Walker. Well, that lineup for the New York Yankees are going to go out there and face the young right hander, Jeffrey Ramirez. See the games three starts two, 0 and 2 with a 2.51 ERA, getting an opportunity here in the second game of the doubleheader for the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, the youngsters are 24 years old. And uh, we'll take a look at the defense behind him. As always, presented by Geico. Peterson, Rickard, and Valencia. And to the outfield, Beckham, Machado, Scope, and Davis in the infield. Cisco doing the catching for Jeffrey Ramirez, young man from the Dominican Republic. We're just about ready. Going game two. The Orioles took game one by a score of five to four. Gardner, Judge, and Gregorius for the Yankees here in the first inning. There are Gardner's numbers on the year 252, six home runs, 25 runs batted in. By the way, the umpires in the second game, Chris Guccione will be calling balls and strikes. Shane's Livid Sparga will be at first base, Jim Reynolds at second, and Sean Barber will be around at third. Just about ready to go. Here's the first pitch of game two, and it's a little bit low for ball one. Ramirez actually has some Yankee ties in the past. There's a ground ball. Gardner gets it started with a base hit in the right field. So just like that, the Yankees have a man on. Well, Brett Gardner had a great weekend in Toronto, a good series, a big game winning hit yesterday. Had a pinch hit opportunity in the first game, but Yankees off to a good start. Here's Aaron Judge. Judge went one for four with a run scored in an RBI in game one, hitting an even 280, knocking on the door of 60 runs batted in. First pitch, and he kicks it, and it's in there for a call strike. Judge had a run scoring single in the third inning of game one and also scored a run that inning. Ramirez obviously has not pitched a game against the Yankees, so the Yankees trying to get a look at him first time through the order. Throw to first, and Gardner just gets back. It looks like he was uh, thinking about going. As a hitter, you're always trying to gauge the fastball. It looks like 92, 93. It doesn't look like it has a lot of movement on it. Gardner's not going, and a pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. One of the Ramirez's best pitches is his changeup. He's got a good one. Like a pretty good slider right there to Aaron Judge too to get ahead in the count 0 and 2. Looks like a fastball disappears right at the end. The 0 2 pitch and it's hit high in the air to right field. Going back, still back, and makes the catch at the wall is Valencia. Gardner tags it, moves the second, and he's in there. Some heads up base running. Well, Judge just missed hitting one out of here as Valencia, who is not really known for his defense in right, up against the wall to make the catch. Yeah, the 0 1 slider was nasty. The 0 2 kind of just spun a little bit, and Aaron Judge gave it a ride. You're right, Valencia, known more as a third baseman, able to make the play up against the wall, and Brett Gardner, some smart base running. It's either going to be a two run home run or it's going to be caught right at the wall, and you can advance to second base. That'll bring up Gregorius, who is one for four in the first game with an RBI single. And he swings and doesn't get it here. Strike one. If you miss game one, the Yankees actually broke out on top. 
So the Orioles came back and uh, won the ball game on the strength of the three run home run by Danny Valencia. Outside for a ball and it's one and one to Gregorius on deck Giancarlo Stanton. Well, there's that change up you were talking about Kenny and I could see what you like about it. Good, a good action down and away to the lefty. Good arm speed. Pitch is driven towards the corner right field. One hop off the board. Gardner's going to score easily. On his way to second is Gregorius, and he's in there with a double. And the Yankees break out in front one nothing. Gregorius with his 48th run batted in. He drove in one in the first game. Well, when you lose a tough game in the first game of a doubleheader, you love to jump out in front in game two. Exactly what the Yankees do. Gregorius gets a fastball pretty much middle, and again, not a whole lot of movement on that fastball from Ramirez, and he takes advantage of it. Now the fences here in right field aren't very deep, so you have to hustle to get a double on anything hit hard towards the corner. Speaking of being hit hard, Stanton ripped his 22nd home run of the year in the opening game. That was in the second, and it was a bullet. They got out of here to left field. So the Gregorius now in scoring position, Stanton at the plate. Stanton two for four in the first game with a couple of runs scored. Pitch is hit on the ground to third for Beckham. The throw across the diamond is in time, and Stanton picking on the first pitch is grounded out to third. Let's take a look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. 83 degrees now here in Baltimore. Humidity at 41 percent. I think that's gone up since the first game. And the wind uh, not much, eight miles per hour. Clear skies of the forecast. And here is Greg Bird. Bird did not play in the first game, getting to start in the second game at first base. Five home runs, nine runs batted in. He's got an RBI sitting out there at second if he wants to get the double figures. First pitch is low for a ball. It was Bird who was hit by a pitch yesterday. He was kind of grazed. I shouldn't be hit. He was grazed. And uh, Tyler Wade went in the pitch run for him and eventually scored the winning run. That pitch is outside. Ball two, two and oh. Bird, 23 hits on the season, 12 of them for extra bases. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Ramirez from Santo Domingo. Originally signed by the Arizona Diamondbacks and came to the Yankees as a Rule 5 draft pick in uh, 2015. Ball is fouled off. Now, the Orioles got him from the Yankees in exchange for international signing bonus slots. You can trade those now. As manager Buck Showalter looks on, as Orioles winning the first game, breaking a six game losing streak with that victory in game one. Pitch to Bird, looked like a change up, and he fouled it off. He kind of showed that one. Every once in a while, pitcher will slow down his arm. And as a hitter, that makes you lead back just a little bit. Keep your weight back. Ramirez coming off a pretty good outing his last time out five innings only one earned run against the Philadelphia Phillies did take the loss in that pitch the bird misses and the count has run full three balls and two strikes Kent Singleton John Flaherty and Meredith Morakovitz glad you're with us. Here's the 3 2 pitch, and Bird takes low ball four. He draws a walk. So the inning will continue for Miguel and Duhar. So Ramirez is going to have to work a little harder here as he faces Andujar, who got one at bat 
as a pinch hitter in the first game had a base hit and he was the runner who was stranded at third as the Yankees failed to score in the ninth inning and lost five to four. Gregorius at second bird at first they're two down the Yankees have scored here in the first inning against Jeffrey Ramirez. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Started him off with a changeup. Well, typically for a young pitcher, whenever they get in trouble, they'll go to their best weapon, the one they feel most comfortable with. And you can see here in the first inning for Ramirez, it's definitely that changeup. This ball is popped up behind home plate. Cisco coming back. Does he have room? No, this is about five rows back. San Francisco getting the start in the second game for Baltimore. Back to back change ups to Andujar way out in front. Would not expect to see three change ups in a row but you never know. That's what you think of when you're up there hitting. Yep. Two on and two outs the Yankees have a run in. Gregorius is on the move. The pitch hits Andujar. And he's going to first base. And it looks like he's going to be okay. Now the Orioles want to check to see if he had actually swung at the pitch. He did not. Instead, painfully, he will go down to first base. And now the bases are loaded. And it'll bring up Clint Frazier. Frazier in game one went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Certainly would like to break out of that right here. Strike one call as Ramirez hits the outside corner. There are the numbers on Frazier. A ball and a strike. And just as we thought, there were more people here in game two. And as the crowd started to fill in during the tail end of game one. No one one pitch. Walk on and missed, and it's one and two. The ball gets away, but not far enough for Gregorius to score. Cisco throwing the ball back to the pitcher. Missed his target. We'll take another look at it. The throw back is a little high. Nice job by Scope being all over. Didi Gregorius kind of paying attention. Obviously, you have to be 100% sure. Frazier down on the count. Swings and misses strike three. And the Yankees will leave the bases loaded, but they do pick up a run here at the top of the first. The Orioles are coming to bat.
as they come up to hit here in the bottom of the first inning. They'll be facing Luis Sessa. Tim Beckham, Jonathan Scope, Manny Machado, the top three. Cleanup hitter is Mark Trumbo. Chris Davis will be back at first base. Danny Valencia, the hitting hitter in game one, will be in right field. Jace Peterson will be in left. Joey Rickard will be in center. And Chan Sisko batting ninth, and he'll do the catch. Well, that lineup for game two of the doubleheader will face Luis Sessa, finishing up his warm-up tosses. His numbers on the year, it'll be a six game, his second start. 0-1 with the 5.00 ERA, so getting another opportunity as a starting pitcher for the New York Yankees, trying to do a little better than he did his last start. Only through three innings against Philadelphia, gave up three earned runs, 74 pitches. So Sessa trying to pitch well enough to get the Yankees even in this second game. Get a split. After dropping the first one, here's Tim Beckham. Beckham in game one went one for four with a single. Sessa, mid 90s fastball, breaking ball, change up occasionally. Fastball is low and away. Here's the mid 90s, 95. Romine doing the catching in game two. Beckham fouls this one off, and that will level the count off to the ball and a strike. Well, we've seen Sessa get some opportunities, and clearly he has the arm to get it done in the big leagues. Line drive right at Walker at second base. One down. Now let's check the defense. Presented by Geico. In the outfield for the Yankees, it's Frazier, Gardner, and Stanton. Infield, around third to first, and Duhar, Gregorius, Walker, and Bird. Romine doing the catching for Luis Sessa. Jonathan Scope had a good first game. Three for four. Scored a run. Now he's hitting seven straight games. Six a pitch in there for a strike. Well, the next step for Sessa to kind of graduate into be a starting pitcher, getting ahead in counts, keeping the pitch count down. Good job right there. First pitch fastball strike. Next pitch slider. Swing and a miss. And the count is now 0 2. The 0 2 pitch is fouled off, and the count will hold the ball at uh, no balls and two strikes. Flash, have you ever been up close to Jonathan Scope? He's a lot he's, bigger. He's a big man. Yes. Yes. You know, the days of the uh, smallish second baseman are over. I mean, this guy's got some power. And uh, turns a double play very well. He's got a very strong arm. Ground ball toward short for Gregorius. And the throw over the bird is in time for round number two. Good start for Sessa. Any starting pitcher, you want to get through that first inning, find that good rhythm, and in order to do it, he's going to have to go through Manny Machado. Which is not an easy thing because Machado has hit seven first inning home runs this year. That's a nice way to start the game off, isn't it? The numbers are all good. As we mentioned in game one, the American League's all star starting shortstop. Sessa deals and it's low and away for ball one. As we did mention in game one, the trade rumors swirl around Manny. Swing and a miss, the count evens at a ball and a strike. Where is Manny going? Or does he go at all? They can just hold on to him and uh, take the draft choice. I think they'd rather take the players. That pitch misses, two balls and a strike. If they can get the deal they want. 
draft pick you never know what's going to turn out with a draft pick. Two one pitch. Ball three three and one. Yankees one Orioles nothing if you're just joining us for game two. And Singleton John Flaherty and Meredith Marakovitz. Here's the pitch and it's ball four. Manny draws a walk. So with two outs he's aboard for Trumbo. Trumbo one for three with a walk two runs scored and a one was a two run home run. They got Baltimore back in the game in the fourth inning. Trumbo with nine home runs his last 20 games. Says the deals this ball's hit well the right center field on the move is Stanton still on the move and he makes the catch. Nice running catch by John Carlos Stanton to close the gap in right center. The Orioles do not score as Stanton hauls it in. One nothing Yankees. Games talking about some of the game one decisions, and we'll start with CC Sabathia. John, you mentioned the fact that he looked a little fatigued in that sixth inning. Sabathia himself said he did not feel fatigued. He just did not make some of those pitches. I asked Aaron Boone whether the doubleheader had something to do with the fact that he kept him in there, and he said no. That probably would have been the plan all the way along, all around. Uh, but that did not necessarily factor into that decision. He's had success against those hitters in the past, and he thought he would be able to get out of the inning. Now CC Sabathia also mentioned that he might have let home plate umpire John Tumpain get the best of him a little bit. He was frustrated by some of the calls and felt as though there were some inconsistencies there and Sabathia being a veteran pitcher generally does not let that type of stuff bother him but he did admit that maybe he didn't shake it off as quickly as he should have out there. Thank you very much Meredith Austin Robine hits a ball into foul territory Chris Davis the first baseman hauls it in. For the first out here at the top of the second. Yeah, I, I think sometimes you got to let things go a little bit. You know, you, you might be able to voice a little displeasure, but I think maybe CC was a little over the top in, in game one. I give him credit for admitting it, too. Yeah. So, one out for the Yankees, and batting ninth is Neil Walker. And he'll get his first opportunity here in game two. Walker one for three in the first game with a base hit and a run batted in. And Ramirez drops a pitch in there for a call strike. Walker started at first base in game one. Game two, he's the second baseman.
Yankees made some roster moves. Well they needed to get Luis Sessa on the roster so they wound up optioning Brandon Drury and Aaron Boone said it was awful to have to tell him that he was heading back to the minors. You heard Brian Cashman throughout the course of this season say he is a major league player but right now they feel a little bit more comfortable carrying Tyler Wade who can fill in for Didi Gregorius at shortstop not to mention he can play second base outfield as well and although they think Aaron Hicks is OK for the doubleheader at least they like the idea of keeping Frey on the roster so unfortunately for Drury he was the odd man out I asked Aaron Boone how he reacted and he said discouraged most likely uh -huh. devastated a little bit but he has been a professional through all of it last time he was sent down he went down continued to work continue to put up good at bats they believe they're going to see him back up here again at some point in time this season a base on balls for Walker so he's on with one out and Drury went down made the all-star team so uh, he did work hard. <laughs> So does that mean now he goes to the All-Star game in that's, AAA? That's a definite possibility, uh, I would think. You know, I, I feel so bad for this guy because yeah. obviously he should be in the big leagues, but there's also a part of me that's so impressed how he goes to the minor leagues and just gets it done and tries to keep that good attitude. Can't be easy. So one on for Brett Gardner, who singled last inning or, and eventually came around to score on the double by D.D. Gregorius. And Brett will take a pitch for a call strike. Very comfortable evening here in Baltimore. Temperature now in the low 80s. Gardner takes a pitch in the dirt. A good stop by Cisco behind the plate. The infield at double play death, but of course uh, Gardner's very tough to double up. Pitches pop foul over the Yankee dugout and back to the seats. The longest tenured Yankee, Rick Gardner. Short lead from Walker over at first. And that comes from StatCast, powered by AWS. That was about my lead right there, Flash. <laughs> <laughs> bigger, bigger than mine. Yeah. Nine. Can we get double figures here? I'd be a little uncomfortable. Go back to eight. Here's the pitch and it's outside a change up two and two on Gardner. Ramirez has just enough fade on that pitch. Yeah, but becoming very predictable Ramirez is early in this ball game. When he needs a big pitch he's going to go to that change up. You know the Yankee hitters on the bench. Marcus Timms the hitting instructor paying attention. Ground ball towards the middle. Manny Machado steps on second from one, throws the first, not in time. Gardner beat the relay, and let's see if the Orioles want to challenge this. It was a close play. Well, we know that Brett Gardner runs well, and we know he hustles down the line every time. But this should be a double play ball. Hit fairly hard right at Machado. Maybe takes his time a little bit, shows off the throwing arm. Brett Gardner beat it. You think it was Manny? Right here, you got to be a little, a little yeah. quicker. So the inning continues, and it'll bring Judge to the plate. I'm glad I didn't have to call that. Judge flying out to right field, deep right field, his first time up. Gardner's not going and the pitch is inside for ball one. Yeah. 
That ball judge hit in the first inning might have been a home run at Yankee Stadium. He's been hitting quite a few to the opposite field lately. Gardner's on the move. The pitch is fouled off. Brett Gardner a good jump. All that work and he's got to come back. Well, Aaron Judge has seen three sliders from Ramirez in this game. One of them has been quality. The other two, a great swing right here. This would have went a long way. That's a hanger. And you think back to that first at bat where he drove it deep to right center field. So get some good swings on the slider. Oh, and he also got a piece of chance, Cisco, on the follow through on the swing. And no protection on your back, is there, Flash? Nope. Ball is hit hard. Manny Ramirez flags it down. Uh, Manny Machado flags it down. Flips the scope for the out. And that will do it for the Yankees here in the top half of the second. And they do not score and leave a runner. The end of inning and a half. One nothing Yankees. By Toyota, the Camry Hybrid is the official hybrid vehicle of the New York Yankees. And here's how the conversation goes this afternoon. Do you think the Orioles will end up moving Manny Machado before the trade deadline? Yes, they obviously won't spend the money to resign him. And with the, the rebuild in motion, you would think that they could receive a haul in return for, for him from a contender. I kind of agree with that. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Camry Hybrid to keep the conversation going. Here's Chris Davis leading off against Luis Sessa, bottom of the second, and Davis swings and misses. Strike one. Davis has, uh, I guess you could say, a very off season going. Make that strike two. We missed one. And he swings and Lines one towards the corner in the right field for a hit. And Davis on an 0 2 pitch will have himself a double as Stanton gets the ball back in. Davis recently was shut down for eight days and 10 out of 12. And it was more or less to try and get his act together. Now he's been hitting the ball better since he's come back. It looked like Sessa threw that pitch in that one zone that Davis likes it, that kind of down and in, and you just sweep it into the corner in right field. For an 0-2 pitch, that's not exactly where you want it if you're Luis Sessa. No. So Davis is the second representing the tying run. And it'll bring up Danny Valencia, who had the big three-run home run for Baltimore in game one. And the first pitch from Sessa is over the outside corner for a strike. Lynch is hitting a, a near 290 clip 
since April. There's strike two from Sessa. Long look at the signs from Romine. Line drive caught by Walker at second base. A looping liner. And Valencia is out number one. No advance for Davis. Well, a much better 0 2 pitch by Sessa that time to Valencia. Kind of worked that slider off of the plate. See, he just runs out of bat, hits it right off the end. A little soft looping line drive. Easy play for Walker. So that'll bring up Jace Peterson with one out, getting to start here in the second game. Baltimore likes his versatility. It's the same Jace Peterson was in spring training with the Yankees this year. That pitch is high and inside for ball one. And the reason why he was with the Yankees, because they liked his versatility. He can play second, third, and the outfield. Playing left field in game two here. High ball two, two and zero. Oh. Ninety-six miles an hour from Sessa. Nice changeup on a two and zero oh pitch, and he picks up a strike. Three and one. Well, moments ago, Adam Jones arrives in the Oriole bullpen. He hasn't had a chance to go out there very often during his 10 years here in Baltimore. Strike two. Peterson thought it was ball four. He has to come back. Count is now full. So we had a hitter strike zone in the first game and maybe a pitcher zone here in game two. Chris Guccione given the low strike. Now full count on Peterson. Little chopper and it's going to roll foul down the first base side. Sessa back in 2015. GM Brian Cashman entered into a trade with the Detroit Tigers. Sessa and Chad Green for Justin Wilson. Pitches hit on the ground to second for Walker. Gets a nice hop, straightens up, throws out Peterson on the play. Davis moves over to third. There are now two down. And at the time, people were thinking, well, Justin Wilson, pretty good relief pitcher. Pretty good left handed reliever. It, exactly. Well, now. You got you know a spot starter in Sessa, and you got a shutdown pitcher in the bullpen in Chad Green, who they thought was a starter, but has really made his niche in the bullpen. Two outs, runner in third. Here's Joey Rickard. Rickard starting in center field. That's why Adam Jones is in the bullpen. And the first pitch is outside for ball one. Rickard. Struck out twice and had two hits and a stolen base in the first game. Two for four. It's the ball in a strike. Rickard started the year in the minors. And you, you got to figure if Adam Jones is uh, traded, Rickard's going to get some more playing time. That's the second time this inning he's dropped the change up in there for a strike. You know, I was talking to CC Sabathia the other day, and I asked him if he would teach a youngster how to pitch. 
He said first thing command of the fastball second thing change, change up. up. Yep. Another change up this one's fouled back Rickard stays alive up there at the plate. I figure CC knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Number three on that list might be a cut fastball. Uh, he didn't say well you know everybody wants they want to break a ball you know all the young kids they want to throw a curveball break a ball. The one two pitch the record is high for ball two two and two count levels off. Davis at third with two outs. Yankees up one nothing. We're in the bottom of the second inning of game two. Now a full count on Rickard. Luis Sessa from Mexico. Looks like they're going with the fastball away. The 3 2 pitch, foul back. 97 miles an hour on that last one. So we've seen change ups at 83 and 84. And we see a fastball at 97. That's enough separation. Yeah, we talked a lot in the first game about the scouts who are here kind of scouting at the trade deadline. But if you're looking at Sessa, he's got all the tools. Ball is hit well to center field. This is going to chase Gardner back. Still going back on the run and makes the catch out near the 410 sign and deep left center field. Now he's going to hand out a souvenir to the fans. So the Orioles do not score. Gardner with a nice running catch to the deepest part of the ballpark. Our final vote ends this Wednesday at 4 p.m. And John Carlos Stanton is in the running. Make your final vote selection for Stanton at yankees.com slash vote. And catch all the excitement of the 89th Major League Baseball All-Star Game presented by MasterCard July 17th live on Fox and ESPN Radio. We are back for the top of the third inning. Now we talked about Brett Gardner's good catch the end of the inning. A nice running catch. And you know, he told you he handed out a souvenir, but we failed to mention who he gave it to. We'll take a look here. You go give it to Adam Jones. Here. There you go, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first pitch strike to D.D. Gregorius. So Adam Jones having a good time out in that Baltimore bullpen. Working on his splitter. He's probably thinking, I'm not the one who gets these. I'm usually the one giving these away. <laughs> Some young fans.
have yeah. to believe he's going to enjoy, enjoy the beginning of the game in the bullpen, then head back into the clubhouse, the dugout, and get ready for maybe a pinch hit opportunity or a little defense. It's Gregorius. Slaps a base hit into right field to lead off the third inning, his second hit of the ball game. Second hit of the ball game and his third of the day. And I always felt there's double header, you got to get three hits. And he's done it. You know, in all the years I played Flash, I never got to sit in the bullpen. I remember I tried it one day in Oakland. I wasn't playing for some reason. And one of the umpires told me I couldn't sit out there. Really? I like, yeah, I know. I felt like going Earl Weaver on it, but I, I figured, why argue? You know, it's too far away from the action out here anyway. You know how the Oakland bullpen's down the right field line for the visitors? Sure. Yeah, I was trying to go out there, walk out there, and sit. No. It's probably better off for you, Kenny, because some of those conversations those bullpen guys have during the course of a ball game, you don't want to get involved in any of that. A lot of nonsense. Okay. You know, if it. I can see if they're talking about our own guys. They could have been talking about me for a long time. <laughs> Carlos standing up for his second at bat. He grounded out to third, his first at bat. Would you say Ramirez's best pit a third pitch is his, his breaking ball? He hasn't thrown all that many. His fastball changeup. Fastball changeup slider is probably 50 50. Good swing by Stan. Fouls it off. He wasn't happy he missed that one. Yeah, he, he figures this shouldn't have been fouled off. But, and that's 92 miles an hour, straight as a string. Right in his happy zone. And for a guy who's swinging the bat as well as Stanton is right now, right now, surprising he fouled it off. See if Ramirez goes with that changeup one and two, he's going to check on Gregorius. And my point is, if his slider is his third best pitch, how do they get Stanton out most of the time? Right handed slider down the Sliders, yep. Well, changeup might be a good option here. Right handed hitters usually not used to seeing changeups from right handed pitching. Run with the change up, missed down and in. You know, Kenny, you hear me talk a lot about hitters and how they take pitches. And you watch Stanton now and how he took that change up, didn't even flinch. Looked like he picked it up right out of his hand. Good sign for him. Comes a 2 2. Line drive right back off the second base. Machado picks it up to throw to first. Stanton safe. Wow. You know how they replace bases sometime during the course of games? They might have to replace this one. That was a BB that hit second base. And Machado almost makes the play at first. Stan had to hustle, which on what normally is a line drive single to center field. I was watching Stanton after he gets past first base and he starts shaking his head like you got to be kidding me. I had to bust it down the line as Machado gives him a nice little grin. The Yankees have something going here in the top of the third first and second nobody out. For Greg Bird who walked his first at bat. By the way that was Stanton's third hit of the doubleheader. Bird trying to get it going offensively ahead in the count two and zero. Oh. Tell you, Bird's been getting his share of base on balls. I mentioned this the other day. Once you do that, that means you have your strike zone under control. Usually, you start hitting after that. Huh? Change up. Hi. 
Kenny, I meant to ask you, what did you think of Aaron Boone's decision to hit Bird down in the lineup in Toronto, right? I think it was ninth one day. Yeah, it was. It, it, you know, it was surprising, but, you know, maybe he's trying to take a little pressure off him, or maybe he's trying to send a signal to him. Yeah, light a little fire. Yeah. Well, it was a 2 0 changeup. We'll see what he comes with 2 and 1 and another changeup. Rick Bird way out front. Here's the change, and not only is it off speed, it kind of fades away from the lefties. Three in a row, we'll see. Yep, three in a row, this one down and away, good take by Bird. Yeah, you know, one of the best hitters I ever played with, and he's in the Hall of Fame, is Eddie Murray. And when pitchers used to throw him a lot of slow stuff, he tell the bat boys to go into his locker and get the heavy bat. About 36, 37 ounces. Wow. And he just weighed, weighed back, and all he had to do was touch the ball. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It took two bat boys to bring it out. <laughs> Gregorius off the second, Stanton off the first. It'll be a 3 2 pitch to Bird. Goes with another changeup, four in a row to pick up the strikeout. Exit velocity is presented by Spectrum Internet with faster download speeds and better performance. We'll take a look at John Carlos Stanton and the exit velocity on that base hit. This is why I think you should be 115 miles per hour. Ricochet to uh, Manny Machado. My goodness, that ball was hit hard. With one down, will bring up Miguel Andujar. He was hit by a pitch, his first at bat. You know, when the Yankees made the deal for Stanton, um, one of my former broadcast partners is Dave Van Horn, and he does the games for Miami on radio, Hall of Famer. And he emailed me. He said, you're going to see some of the hardest singles and doubles you've ever seen. And uh, he was right on right. the money. Looking down at Stanton taking his lead, and he's got his body turned towards second base. As Davis is playing behind him, really just locked in on D.D. Gregorius to see if he's going to steal a bag. Stanton will follow. Kind of unusual to see him straight up towards second base. Well, D.D. was on the move his last time when he was on second. It was Bird on first at, the, at that time in the first inning. Didi not running. Big swing and a miss by Andujar. You know how usually uh, the signs are one, two, three, fastball, slider, curve. Maybe may change up four. Change up's got to be number one number for this one. Guy. Yeah. Now they get more complicated when there's a man on second base. So you won't see the standard one, two, three, four. I wonder if you're Chance Cisco behind the plate catching for Baltimore here in the second game and you see Stanton kind of the way he's set up would he be able to turn around and get back to first base you, you call the play yeah give Davis a little heads up hey might want to throw behind here and Davis I just saw him blowing a bubble I don't think he just got a <laughs> sound <laughs> obviously Reggie Willits the first base coach all over it paying attention to Davis making sure he's not going to creep behind it's a one two to Andujar just misses down. The other day in Toronto, and Duhar got a chance to bat fourth for the first time in his career. Drove in a run. Comes to 2 2. This ball hammered, but foul. Jeez. As Yankee fans know, young Mr. Andujar is an extra base hitting machine. 39 extra base hits. You know, Kenny, they're all different types of hitters, and you know, we played with guys who go up there and they're thinking about mechanics, and we played with guys who go up there and just trying to drive the ball, and that's what it looks like from Andujar. 
Not a whole lot of thought process about his mechanics. Just see the ball, hit it as hard as he can. Yep. Another 2 2. Fouled off. Do are hitting 279, 12 home runs, 39 RBIs, looking to add on to that RBI total. Good swing, fouls it straight back. Fastball at 95. Might not have been a strike, but he wasn't taking any chances. Be the 60th pitch already for Ramirez. Yeah, that first inning really burned up a few. Well, big swing and a miss, so Ramirez wins the battle with Anduar. Two down. Yeah, when uh, and Duhar comes to the plate, he's already in the swing mode, and that pitch might not have been a strike. And 23 in the first, 22 here in the third. Let's another change up and the fade. With two down will bring up Clint Frazier. He's 0 for 1. He struck out to end the first inning. Three strikeouts in game one, so this doubleheader not going the way Clint had planned it so far. He did a good job of hitting with two outs in game one. We'll see if Frazier can come through here. I always felt a pitcher who had a good changeup. During the course of the game, he's going to make a mistake with one or two up. And the high changeups have a way of going a long way. If a hitter lays back and sits back and times it. There goes Gregorius. He's on the move. The throw down. And he's out. A good throw by Chance Cisco catching for Baltimore. It's going to end the top of the third inning. Gregorius aggressive on the bases. Good throw by Cisco. So the Yankees threat not able to come through. They lead one nothing. You, the trainer, looked like he got banged up a little bit on that attempted steal of third base where he got thrown out to end the inning. Well, let's take a look. Uh, 
Didi trying to move himself to third and a runner the extra runner in the scoring position. Let's see. Yeah, he gets tagged up around the facial area and is shaken up. It's Beckham applying the tag. Okay, well that play was closer than I thought. Didi now uh, back out at shortstop. Maybe, well, maybe a fat lip. Be Chance Cisco to lead off here in the bottom of the third. The Yankees lead one nothing. Cisco hitting at 197. Quickly ahead in the count two and zero. Oh. Cisco, they think, is going to be the catcher of the future here. Ball hit hard. Greg Bird makes a nice play. Sessa coming over. One down. Well, on this date, we take a look back to Derek Jeter and a hit number 3,000 against David Price was a big one. Home run into left field. History making swing for Derek and the New York Yankees. Yeah, Derek had had a single earlier in the game for 2,999. Yep. I thought that was one of my greatest jobs as a Yankee broadcaster doing that game, Kenny. I didn't say a word. Just That's let let it let it play out. Exactly. That's yep. what you're supposed to do. I mean, big part of Yankee history. Great call by Michael K. History with an exclamation point. Nothing else needed to be said after that. Maybe even more than one exclamation point. That's 3,000 of them. Back to the top of the lineup. Tim Beckham, he lined out. Second base is first at bat. Sessa falling behind here in the third. Yeah, I think a good trip right here by Austin Romine. That 2 0 fastball missed by a lot. And we talk, Kenny, everybody, you love the stuff. 97 miles an hour, great changeup, great slider, but at some point you got to kind of put it together to get through a lineup a couple of times and falling behind 2 0 to the number nine hitter and now 3 0 to the number one hitter. Put yourself in a tough spot. Good. So you're telling Roman, Romine's telling him, get let's, ahead on counts. Let's here. go. Your stuff is good enough. Uh -huh. Challenge some hitters. Got a great defense behind you. Let's go. Put the ball in play. Didi trying to get through this bottom of the third. A four pitch walk. With one down will bring up Jonathan Scope. Grounded out to Gregorius, his first at bat. Didi's still checking that lip out at shortstop. He's, it looks like he has a gauze pad. First pitch swinging ground ball to Ann Duhar over to second base to Walker over to Bird and scope is safe. And Duhar had to retreat just enough to give scope a little bit more time to get down the line to come up with the proper hop. Now watch. He retreats just enough and that's uh, that's the difference here. He gets the ball over the Walker the return throw scope too fast. Uh, we're going to take a look at our G Pitter scanner report on Manny Machado, and he's going to go to his fourth All Star game starting at shortstop. He started at third base in the past, and a good combination, Kenny. You mentioned this 385, four home runs against the Yankees this year, and a 362 home batting average. So, good combination for him. And right on right, he's hitting 327. That's fifth in the American League. And he fouls off a first pitch fastball. You know I think one thing about Manny having a year like this he's kind of separated all the turmoil around him about <laughs> where he's going or what his next destination might be one day it's the Dodgers one day it's Milwaukee Arizona the Phillies and every town he's visited that's in the mix all the reporters are all around him. yeah that was a good change up. Yeah, 
And by far, you know, he might be having his best season. Sessa ahead in the count 0 2. We'll see if he can put away Machado. Break the ball, good block by Austin Romine. Flash knows his blocking Billy and uh, what you're supposed to do. It's almost textbook by Romine. Well, the biggest key there is angling that upper body back towards home plate so you, you deflect everything back towards the field to play. But again, an 0-2 pitch that you really don't get a whole lot out of, right, Kenny? Because it's bounced so far out front of the plate. Machado hits this ball well to right center field. Gardner back, able to make the play up against the wall. Nice leaping grab by Brett Gardner to end the bottom of the third. So Machado hit it right on the nose, but Brett Gardner runs it down. Nice defensive play by the Yankee center fielder. Catch baseball's biggest stars for an unforgettable show from the nation's capital. The Major League Baseball All-Star Game, July 17th, only on Fox or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Top of the fourth inning, it'll be 7-8-9 for the Yankees. Clint Frazier, Austin Romine, Neil Walker. Frazier first pitch swinging, fouls off a good fastball. On our Audi scoreboard, 1-0 Yankees. Frazier struck out in the first inning, now hitting 233, looking for that first home run 2018. Works underneath this one, fouls it off. Now, I'm watching Ramirez here trying to pick up his patterns, and it's almost as if he shows fastball and then goes to the changeup. Well, the changeup has been the big strikeout pitch tonight. Goes with it again, misses down and in. It would be worth to get to get the count to three and one, just to say this is going to be a change. But anything else he throws up here, I'm not going to swing it. Two two right by Frazier. The second strike out of the ball game for him. Number four for Ramirez. Sometimes you get in these strikeout frenzies. I used to call them. And you were hoping, you, even if you made now, to be some other way. <laughs> <laughs> one down will bring up Austin Romine. 
His first pitch swinging fouls it off. Ramirez quickly ahead in the count 0 and 2. Well, the Orioles are looking for young pitchers. Controllable over time. You know, I know they have their ups and downs, a few bumps in the road, but gaining experience at the big league level maybe is uh, Mr. Ramirez here. Well, we'll see how active Baltimore is at the trade deadline. You'd have to believe Zach Britton, from what we saw in game one, would be attractive as Romine fouls off a tough pitch. Britton Machado with Jones. Yeah. Uh, I heard Jones on an interview today. He said, well, he's he's holding the cards. He can only go where yeah. he wants to go. Okay, well, Zach Britton looked pretty good to me in game one. Velocity was there, movement was there. Romine works underneath this one, be a fly ball. Middle of the diamond looks like Machado making the call and he makes the play. Two down. You know, when teams are looking at Britain, do you think they're trying to measure him by what he did two years ago? Because that year would be hard to duplicate that type of pitching. Do you understand what I mean? I, they have to be looking at velocity and movement, okay. right? I mean, as long as the ball's coming out of his hand like it used to, and that's from what I saw in game one, that's what I remember him looking like. Yeah. Two down will bring up Neil Walker. He walked his first at bat. Squares the bunt down the third base line, and it's a beauty. Bunt base hit for Neil Walker to extend the inning. You know, Walker does this with two outs, but I also feel the more hitters that would do this, this would really put a crimp in the style of the of the ship. The ship was on. Once he got it by Ramirez, there was no chance for Beckham. And as you said, Flash, it continues the inning. More hitters are going to have to do that. Then they'll start rethinking the ship. Two down will bring up Brett Gardner. But a base hit to lead off the game, continuing his hot hitting. Scored a run. Comes the 1 0. That misses off the plate. This be one of those times, Kenny, you'd sit on a changeup maybe? This is, yeah. You can see that uh, he's not afraid to throw one. If he gets one that doesn't fade away enough, or he, 2 0, he's more apt to throw it basically to get a strike. To get a strike. Came with a fastball. Gardner drills it to right field. No doubt about this one. Brett Gardner, a two run rocket to the right center field bleachers. Yankees lead 3 0. Well, obviously, Gardner's sitting on a different pitch than I would have been, but he was right. Well, he is locked in right now. That's his second home run on this road trip. He hit one to lead off the game in Toronto on Saturday, and now he connects again here in Baltimore. How about the bunt base hit by Neil Walker to extend the inning? There you go.
Three nothing Yankees brings up Aaron Judge. He's first pitch swing, big swing and a miss. Is that a changeup? Like a fastball okay. down, I think. All right. It was middle of the plate, whatever it was. And now it's a souvenir. To the night. Home run number seven for Brett Gardner. Starting to get all the pieces coming together. Gardner swinging the bat. Hit swinging the bat. Judge all year long. Stanton's been hot lately. This is another rocket for a base hit for Aaron Judge. The fourth inning continues. Well, Gardner with the home run. Let's see what happens to it once it gets into the stands. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Now the kid goes nuts. <laughs> uh, that's great. That is fantastic. <laughs> Something he'll never forget. The two down, bring up D.D. Gregorius. Had a double and an RBI. A base hit his last at bat. Judge taking his lead off the of first. And after two quick outs for Ramirez here in the fourth, a bunt base hit by Neil Walker, a two run home run by Brett Gardner, and a base hit by Aaron Judge. Seven hits already for the Yankees. I'll tell you what, for Brett Gardner lately, bunts in front of him have played a prominent role. And on Sunday, Austin Romine with a bunt. Gardner gets a base hit to drive in the winning run. Tonight, Walker with a two out bunt against the shift brings Gardner to the plate, and he follows with a two run homer. So the whole idea is if you want to butt, make sure Brett Gardner's up next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Didi Gregorius is thinking bunt right here, heading the count two and oh. He's swinging hit, a hot bat. Yeah, he hit the ball hard both times up. And he rolls over this one to Davis. So the top of the fourth inning ends, but the damage has already been done. Brett Gardner swinging a hot bat lately. This is going to be a seventh home run of the year. No doubt about that one. A two run shot, and the Yankees lead 3 0.
party of the New York Yankees it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Bottom of the fourth it'll be four five six for Baltimore Trumbo Davis and Valencia. On our Audi scoreboard the Yankees up three nothing Luis Sessa a little bit of breathing room here in the fourth inning. Trumbo for one a fly ball in the first. It's one of those innings I was talking about Kenny with Sessa you know a three run lead now your stuff is plenty good enough attack the strike zone kind of have that quick one two three get my guys back in there swinging the bats again. Yeah and make sure you go hard get that first guy out of the inning. Obviously you're just not going to throw all fastballs off speed but just make sure you're throwing quality strikes not trying to do too much. As Trumbo goes the other way and slaps a base hit. Bring up Chris Davis who had a double in the second inning a breaking ball down and in just raked it into the corner in right field. Obviously a down year 169 home runs 28 RBIs. And watching him swing he'd have to show me that he can hit that fastball up in the zone. Yeah I, I think you know you mentioned the fact he's got a swing in one area. And what usually pitchers do, they go just a little lower than that or a little higher than that. Now, the other day, Davis broke the franchise strikeout record. It had been set by Cal Ripken, but it took Ripken 21 years to set this record. Davis did it in 2000. Plus fewer games. Wow. He it's did it eight plus years. Just added on to it right there. 21 year record that Ripken set striking out. He, Davis did it in eight plus years. And as, as Flash just told you, here's another one. Lower than. He likes it down there. You throw it a little bit lower and he'll chase. Yeah, I like the pitch before and another look on Yesmo brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealers. I like the fastball the pitch before elevated in the zone uh -huh. just to show him. and then you come back with the breaking ball down. Bring up Danny Valencia first pitch swinging. The soft line drive in the second inning nine home runs 26 RBIs the big swing at the bat against Sabathia in game one. Sessa quickly ahead 0 and 2. This fast speed speed analytics is brought to you by Fios by Verizon 95 miles an hour on that last fastball from Sessa. You know when you get your official statistics and we have some of them right in front of us strikeouts are listed as SO strikeouts and we used to call it the so race. <laughs> Ground ball to Didi over to Walker. Over to Bird and a nice 6 4 3 double play. And Luis Sessa appreciates the effort. Gregorius to Walker, the strong throw over to Greg Bird. Yankees lead 3 0.
Bob, and uh, here we are in the fifth inning. John Carlos Stanton's going to lead it off against Jeffrey Ramirez. Yankees are up three nothing as we head to the fifth. Stanton had a single his last time up, and it was a rope. There's a drive down the left field line, and it is foul. Just a little too quick. Well, there is a dangerous man in the batter's box these days. Stanton just a little too quick. And again, it was that changeup. Puts him in the half spin cycle, and it's a ball and a strike. Average up to 271 now. Checked his swing. The appeal? No, nah, he didn't go. One and two. And the Baltimore dugout can't believe it. Buck Showalter now up on the rail. We get another look from the side. Yeah, he, looked, he looked like he yeah. wanted after. Definitely swung at that one, and it's two and two. Buck is still up, giving it to the first base umpire. Full count. Stanton hits it hard and fair down the third baseline by Beckham. Stanton rounded first on his way to second. And another hard hit ball off the bat of Giancarlo Stanton. His fourth hit of the doubleheader. I don't think that's going to make Mr. Showalter any happier. Well, it just seems like Giancarlo Stanton now locked in. Getting mistakes is making the opposing pitchers pay. Getting the breaks on the check swing. Just able to keep it fair. Great look at it right there from that angle. And uh, Roger McDowell, the pitching coach, out to the mound. And uh, what he's doing out there is giving the bullpen time to get going. It's like Meisinger throwing. Ryan Meisinger. Stanton last 21 games. How about getting a little heated up during the summer? Hot times. Summer in the city. 373. And some of the hardest balls you ever want to see hit. So he's at second with nobody out. And Greg Bird will come to the plate. Bird looking for contact. He's walked and struck out. 0 for 1. Yankees trying to increase a 3 0 lead here in the second game. They dropped the first game by a score of 5 4 to Baltimore. In the dirt, the ball gets away from Cisco, and Stamp will try it over the third. This is going to be a wild pitch. We're going to get another look, another changeup, and Cisco just a little bit late trying to get there. Tries to make up for it at the last minute, turning his left shoulder, but he doesn't get away with it. And Greg Bird, his job just got a little bit easier. The infield will be coming in for Baltimore. Middle of the field, get the ball in the air if you're Greg Bird. Ball is lying towards the gap in right center field. Good drop in for a base hit. Stanton can cruise home. It's 4 0 Yankees, and Bird has his 10th run batted into the year. Well, it wasn't a rocket off the bat of Greg Bird, but the approach was perfect. Get a pitch elevated, get in center field up in the air, and that's going to be it for Ramirez. So Ramirez's night is done. It's a changeup starting to come up a little bit, and Bird makes him pay, and the Yankees lead 4 0. So that's it for Ramirez. Buck Showalter makes the call. We'll be right back.
Friday, July 27th, one of the hottest collectibles of the season. It's CC Sabathia Bobblehead Night, the third in the 2018 Collectible Series, presented by AT&T. For the first 18,000 guests in attendance at the stadium. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com, visit Yankee Stadium ticket windows, Yankee clubhouse shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. Uh, the Babe Ruth Museum just a few blocks away from Camden Yard. CC was over there today. You know, CC's a left-handed hitter just like the Babe. <laughs> Here's Miguel Andujar facing the new pitcher, Ryan Meisinger. Recently recalled from the minor leagues or and his contract selected from the minors. That means he was not on the 40-man roster. That was back on June 29th. And he faced Seattle that night, went an inning in two thirds, and allowed one run on two hits with a strikeout. Pitch is hit on the ground towards the middle. Machado scoops it up, flips the scope for one. That's all they'll get. Machado's been laying out all over that left side of the infield tonight, and Duhart couldn't get it through there. And Bird is forced at second. Well, and Duhart hits this ball hard. Machado lays out, has a little trouble getting it over to scope. I don't think they would have had much of a chance for a double play anyway. Just couldn't sneak it through the infield. Here's Clint Frazier. Who struck out twice. Fouls this one off. So Ann Duhart takes over at first base with one out. Meisinger deals and that's low and away for a ball. Meisinger actually started his season at double A Bowie, moved up to triple A Norfolk, and now finds himself in the Oriole bullpen. And Duhar is on the move. The pitch is hit on the ground. Foul down the third base side. So Miguel will make his way back to first base. While the count moves to a ball and two strikes on Clint Frazier. Cisco keeps that one in front of him and Duhart, no advance. Full count. Oh, and Duhar was on the move once during this uh, Frazier at bat. Will he be going on this 3 2 pitch? Yeah, I'd expect him to be running. Cisco behind the plate, known more as an offensive catcher than a defensive guy. We'll trust in Clint Frazier here. He's not going. Ground ball towards short. Machado to scope to Davis. 6 4 3 double play. And that's it for the Yankees here in the top of the fifth when they pick up a run and lead 4-0.
more. Masahiro Tanaka is scheduled to come off the DL tomorrow and get the get the ball for the second game or I should say third game of this series and uh, he said today in the clubhouse that he felt good even before he went on that rehab assignment in Tampa he had been throwing the hamstrings felt fine he knew that he was good to go one thing that Aaron Boone did say today there may be some restrictions as far as pitch count is concerned he's not completely stretched out but they believe that he's going to be able to go out there and give them at least five innings. well that's good news for the Yankees as hero Tanaka was uh, but he had seven and two record when he went on the DL. And Kenny, there's so much talk about this Yankees team needing another starter. Getting Tanaka back is a big part of it. That definitely fortifies their rotation. Although Brian Cashman will continue to do his due diligence out there in making phone calls, having Tanaka and Luis Severino and CC Sabathia, that's not a terrible one, two, three. No, it's not. Certainly agree. On our GMC scoreboard, Yankees are up four nothing. Jace Peterson rolls one to second base for Neil Walker. And he is thrown out, out number one here in the fifth inning. So Sessa picks up out number one here in the fifth to bring up Joey Rickard, the center fielder. Sessa doing exactly what the Yankees needed in game two here. The pitch count is very, very under control at 60. One out in the fifth. Rickard takes a little bit outside for ball one. That is a call strike. From Chris Guccione. Way outside ball two two one. That's got a piece of it. Levels the count at two and two. Number nine hitter on deck is Chance Cisco. Did he go? No. First base umpire. Shane Luke and Sparkin. Uh, you knew there was no chance that was going to be called after the Stanton one. Buck <laughs> Showalter would have ran out of that dugout. Three two pitches high for ball four. <laughs> and Rickard <laughs> reaches on the base on ball. Luis Sessa can't believe it. That looked like a pretty good three two pitch. Certainly had plenty of plate. Check out the height. Flash. Sessa can't believe it. He's got a good argument. So one on one out here, Cisco. Who grounded the bird at first? Bird robbed him of a hit. Sharply hit ball. There is a call strike. Yankees four, Baltimore nothing. Luis Sessa just far has allowed just a couple of hits. That pitch is fouled off, and Cisco is in the hole. No balls and two strikes. Everybody. Speaking of the Tanaka pitching tomorrow night, his mound opponent will be Andrew Cashner. And Cisco is caught looking. Makes that well known turn and heads back to the dugout. Nice rebound by Sessa after the close pitch that he didn't get a call. He gets a change up. Called for strike three down and away. Romine brings it back up to the strike zone. Here's back up back to the top of the order. He's hit a soft line drive to second for an out, and he's drawn a base on balls. Rickard is a stolen base threat, despite the fact that the Orioles are down four nothing. He had a stolen base in the first game.
fouled off. Now Beckham, as we mentioned, came to the Orioles in a trade from the Rays. Rickard at first base was a Rule Five pick from the Rays. He's not going and the pitch is fouled off again by Beckham and like Cisco before him he's in the hole no balls and two strikes Sessa continues to throw strikes here in the fifth inning. Oh two fouled off he just got a piece of it. You know in flash right now I think it, I think he's got him in the swing mode and this doesn't really have to be a it has to be a near strike. Let's see where Romine sets that target. There it is. A near strike and he swings and misses for strike three. Sessa picks up his third strikeout. It's four nothing Yankees. Half the pinstripes for behind the scenes look at Yankees AAA farm team. On this episode, hit the links with the Rail Riders in their annual charity golf tournament. Catch Homegrown tomorrow night at 11, following the Yankees post game show on Yes. Austin Romine takes a strike from Ryan Meisinger here in the top of the sixth inning. Yankees are up 4 0. There are the uh, statues beyond the bullpens in left center field. Uh, that was Frank Robinson in the foreground and uh, Eddie Murray both Hall of Famers. And that's the only way you get out there. <laughs> As a statue Brooke, there's one of Brooks Robinson there's one of uh, Earl Weaver and there's one of Cal Ripken there's pitches fouled off. And there's one of Jim Palmer. There's Brooks and there's Earl. Looks like Earl's ready to yell at an umpire. <laughs> and there's uh, Jim Palmer with that classic over the top. Right handed style of pitching. The 1 2 pitch. It's rolled foul. Oh, no. Yep, it is foul. Romine at first thought it was going to go foul and then started to run down the first baseline. We'll take another look at it. Romine out over the top of it. Think there's no chance. But things get a little interesting as he starts hustling down the line. Jim Palmer's here tonight calling the game for Masson. 
the booth right next door. One two pitch is fouled off by Romai. He looks a little different these days than he did before. Eh? He's sporting a beard. Yeah, he's got a little facial hair. Yeah, it surprised it's, me today. It's, it's a little different look. He's got one of those beards that you take to dinner salt and pepper. <laughs> That pitch is called strike three. Romine is caught looking. One out here in the sixth. I'll tell you, Flash, my first year with the Orioles, Palmer threw up. Complete game opening day, three hit shutout. That was his first of 25 complete games. Wow. Him. I don't think the whole league has 25 complete games right now, or will have at the end of the year. 324 innings that year. And Gary Thorne adjusts to uh, Palmer's left as Walker fouls this ball off. Do you ever hear Gary Thorne call a hockey game? No. I don't know how he gets all these names right. I, I just some of the toughest names in the world you can think of. He, he he's shoots them out there like uh, you know Joe Smith. You know that that sort of thing. That pitch is inside for a ball. One and one. I'd have to argue with you. I think soccer players have the toughest names to pronounce. I butchered <laughs> that read in the first game pretty good. <laughs> and Bappe and all these different names. Sounds like a dance, doesn't it? Here's, here's the pitch, and it's outside for a ball, two and one. But those, you know what? Those guys might be better known than baseball players around the world. True. Two balls and a strike on Neil Walker, who laid down. A bunt with two outs and beat it out for a hit, and Brett Gardner followed with a home run. He bunted against the shift. Gardner, who's uh, back to the top of the order following Walker, hit one into the seats in right center field. At the time, it gave the Yankees a 3 0 lead. 3 1 pitch. Walker trying to hit one of his own, swings and misses, and the count is full of 3 and 2. Well, nowadays, if a manager let a pitcher throw 324 innings, it, it wouldn't happen. Pitches hit hard. Manny Machado on a couple of hops has a strong arm, throws out Walker. You're two down here in the sixth. Adam Jones has been making his way around uh, Camden Yards. Now he's, he's out there with the ground crew trying to see if there's any chance of rain. I don't think there is tonight. Brett Gardner scored a couple of runs and driven in a couple in this game. Two for three. Seventh home run of the year in the fourth inning. Meisinger deals and starts him with a changeup and drops it in for a strike. Adam Jones just. <laughs> wow. Hello, everybody. Give him a couple innings, he'll be up here with us. <laughs> the 0 1 pitch to Gardner, and he swings and misses. It reminds me of, I don't know if you saw the footage years ago. Remember the pitcher Tom Browning, left hander for the Reds at Wrigley Field? He went across the street and sat on top of the apartments during the game <laughs> in uniform. <laughs> of course, he got fined for that. He was a starting pitcher, though, right? Yes, so he was. A little different. <laughs> yeah, but not in uniform during yeah. the game. Pitches in the dirt for a ball. I mean, they showed him up. They, they had a tight shot of him, and then they pulled away, and you could see him sitting on top of the apartment building watching the game at Wrigley Field. I don't think the league appreciated that. I don't think the Reds appreciated that. The one two pitch to Gardner and he pulls it foul. Then again, you know, Browning was a left handed pitcher. <laughs> that explains a lot. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I 
kind of leads me back to Brett Gardner when he hit that uh, three run home run against the Cubs at Wrigley Field a couple of years ago. Two outs in the ninth. Fouls this one off. Gave the Yankees a 3 2 win. Didn't quite make the apartments, but it was far enough. <laughs> Four nothing Yankees, top of the sixth. Meisinger deals. Gardner takes the change up low. Good check swing. In this picture, Judge looks as tall as a warehouse. Gardner hits it hard but right at scope on a couple of hops. Yankees go one two three here in the top of the six but they will maintain a four nothing lead. Adam Jones. <laughs> Come on down. Divisional matchup against Manny Machado and the Orioles. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. with the Audi batting practice today and the Chevy Yankees pregame. It's right here on Yes and streaming on Fox Sports Go. We're just talking about Tom Browning of the Cincinnati Reds and him sitting. <laughs> Take a look at this, folks. That's across the street. That's across is a Sheffield Avenue. <laughs> Browning in uniform. Uh, Mike Medvin, of course, came up with that footage, and uh, Mike's the best ever. <laughs> Jonathan Scope leading off, and he'll take a fastball upstairs for ball one. Four nothing Yankees in the bottom of the sixth inning. The 1 0 pitch is lined towards right field for a base. And Scope continues his hot hitting. That's his first hit of the second game. He had three in the first game. Well, I'm sure Aaron Boone's going to be paying attention here in the sixth inning. Sess has been great tonight through five. He's going to have to maneuver the middle of this lineup right now here in the sixth inning. Scope, Machado, and Trumbo. That's just the third hit he's allowed. Machado tonight has drawn a base on balls and flied out to deep right center field. High for ball one. In game one, Manny put together a one for four afternoon with his 20th double of the year and a run score. Souvenir down the right field line. The count levels off at a ball and a strike. <laughs> a 
fouled off once again. And now Manny's behind on the count, one and two. Number one draft pick of the Orioles. Years gone by. On the ground is short. Didi flips to Walker. On the bird, 6 4 3, double play. Second double play that Sessa has handed out behind him tonight. Big time pitch by Sessa, but a nice flip by Didi Gregorius to Walker and on Yes Mo, brought to you by your Mercedes Brent Benz Tri State Dealer. Makes that play easy for Walker to turn the double play and a huge pitch by Sessa when you start thinking things might get out of hand here in the sixth inning a nice six four three double play takes care of everything. Well they say pitcher's best friend right double play. Trumbo takes a pitch for a call strike. Right before that pitch I'm thinking you know I'm surprised Aaron Boone doesn't have the bullpen going the pitch count up upper 70s and now 80. And all of a sudden, your starting pitcher makes a big pitch, and you don't have to worry about it. Plus, he more or less has the bullpen locked and loaded. Trumbo's one for two, single to right his last time, and uh, he'll take a pitch for a strike, and now he's down in the count one and two. Sess has had three strikeouts. He's also walked three in tonight's game. Two two. And he's allowed just three hits. Now the count is full. On Mark Trumbo. Sessa dealing the 3 2 pitch. Swung on it, missed strike three. He got him. Gives up a hit, nothing else here in the six. It's on to the seventh. 4 nothing Yankees. Good job by Sessa. Congratulations, so his night is done. Six shutout innings against Baltimore. Give the Yankees everything they could have hoped for tonight and a little bit more. 
Ryan Messinger back out there for Baltimore to be Judge, Gregorius, and Stanton. Six innings, three hits, no runs, three walks, and four strikeouts, 85 pitches. It's just what the doctor ordered. Aaron Judge one for three at a single in the fourth. Four nothing Yankees on our Cadillac scoreboard. Only three hits given up by Luis Sessa as Aaron Judge goes out of the strike zone, swing and a miss. Cisco going to finish up the play, one down. Gallegos. He was called up today as the 26th man in this doubleheader. Major League teams uh, during doubleheaders are allowed to uh, add a player onto the roster. More often than not, it's a pitcher. Didi Gregorius having a good night, two for three. Three hits in a doubleheader flash. That'll do it. He had one in the first game. Everything else is a bonus and from it, here on. You just go from this point on. Ooh, that changeup was upstairs. Is maybe a little too far away from him. Well, blocked off the other way. Machado up with it. Easy play. Two down. Now a quick word from Spectrum. Spectrum Internet. No data caps, no contracts. Just faster speeds with better performance. Well, two down, bring up John Carlos Stanton. He's also having a good night. A base hit in the third, a double in the fifth. Maybe a little better than good. He's got four hits in the double hit. Making a little push here for that final vote for the All Star team. Batting average now 273, 22 home runs, 52 RBIs. Another check swing did not go. Told you in 41 road games, he came into tonight's doubleheader hitting 311, and he's got four hits tonight. That's 1 1. Fouled straight back. Well, you can go on MLB.com and vote for Giancarlo Stanton. He's got the attendance here at Camden Yards, 26,340. One, two for Messenger, down. Big swing and a miss at a fastball elevated. John Carlos Stanton not happy with himself. So a solid one, two, three inning for Ryan Messenger. He gets a strike out of Stanton, a pitch out of the zone.
game summary, which is brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. There's a lot of good news for the Yankees there. Four nothing, nine hits for the Yankees, three for Baltimore. Luis Sessa, the guys just broke it down. Six innings, three hits, no runs, three walks, and four strikeouts. Ramirez gave up the four runs. Brett Gardner, the big two-run shot. Didi Gregorius, solid night. Two for four, an RBI double. Uh, the new pitcher for the New York Yankees is going to be Giovanni Gallegos. Just finished up his warm up tosses as Kenny told you he was the extra player activated for today's game. Numbers on the season will be his fourth game the 3.86 ERA. Ten strikeouts in seven innings. And I guess if you activate him for the game you might as well try to get some work out of him. Yeah, right? uh, maybe an inning or two depending on how quickly this one goes. And He's going to face Chris Davis, Danny Valencia, and Jason Peterson. Our Cadillac scoreboard, 4 0 Yankees. Davis had to double his first at bat. He struck out in the fourth. Gallegos falls behind 2 0. The shift is on on the right side. Neil Walker in the short right field. You know, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. Even though Davis is a left handed hitter, look and see where Giancarlo Stanton is stationed in right field. Well off the line. And the feeling is if the ball's hit hard towards the right field, corner or high enough it's going to be a home run anyway because it's only 318 feet you can see where Stanton is in right center the whole thing is to guard the gap and you know stay away from a you know a double or a three base hit well, Davis had the count three and one and the interesting thing about that is that at Old Memorial Stadium it was only 309 down each line and the outfielders used to play towards the gaps to cut off the extra base hits because anything hit well down the line is going to be a home run anyway. Yeah, strike two. That was uh, definitely more of a pitcher's part. What was it to center field? Uh, I think 400? about 410. Yeah. yeah, something like that. It's 3 2 from Gallegos, fouled off. So when I was at George Washington University, we made the drive to the old Memorial Stadium. You were not you were in college at college. Yeah. Nice neighborhood ballpark, right? Yeah. Remember it's, setting back in the neighborhood? It used to be a, a, a big white house in center field. And the Orioles for years tried to get the lady to own it to paint it, and she wouldn't do it until in the early in the season, it was hard to see the ball. Then when the leaves came in. Check swing. Davis did not go, so a leadoff walk. But as you know, spring came along and went further along, and the leaves would fill out, and then you can see better. We'll take a look at Davis. He thought about it, but he did check. That was on 33rd Street. The neighborhood is called Waverly. Now to bring up Danny Valencio for two in the second game of the doubleheader. I think there's a YMCA there now, and uh, Cal Ripken built a youth field at the site. First pitch swing, backhand by Andujar over to Walker, over to Bird. So a nice 5 4 3 double play, big pitch by Gallegos, nice turn, Andujar to Walker. That is the third double play that the Orioles are wrapped into, and this is a nice play by Andujar on the backhand. Excellent throw, then the relay to first. That was uh, made to look easy, but it really wasn't. This is on Yesmo once again, brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealer. Walker with the turn, the man in the middle. Two down will bring up Jace Peterson, and Ed Duhar really has come a long way defensively. With a nice backhand, the accurate throw. That was the thought in spring training. Can he handle the position? And uh, kind of looks like it to me as we are more than halfway through the season. Oh. 
comes the 1 1 from Gallegos and misses off the plate. Peterson a couple of ground balls to second base and Neil Walker tonight. Some activity Baltimore's bullpen to be Brad Brock. Two two from Gallegos fouled off. The Yankees scored a run in the first, two in the fourth, one in the fifth. They lead 4 0 here in the bottom of the seventh. Trying to salvage the second game of the doubleheader. Three two count with a four run lead here in the bottom of the seventh. You'd expect Gallegos with a nice little fastball out over the plate. Force Peterson to try to put this ball in play. And he goes inside corner and just misses. So a couple of walks for Gallegos here in the seventh. Take a look as Peterson showing a good eye. Yes. Two down, bring up Joey Rickard, 0 for 1 here in the second game, walked in the fifth. Running. Romine coming up with the throw and right on the money. And Austin Romine throws out Jace Peterson with a 4 0 lead. A perfect strike by Austin Romine. Right on the money. A nice tag by Neil Walker. And Gallegos walked a few in the inning, but the defense picked him up. Yankees lead 4 0. City hosts the Montreal Impact at Yankee Stadium. Coverage presented by Etihad Airways begins at 7 on Yes 2 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. For a list of Yes 2 channel locations, go to yesnetwork.com. New pitcher for the Orioles here in the top of the eighth inning. It's going to be Brad Brock. And 
and this is what he's done so far this year. Brock was actually working as the closer, and he deals to Greg Bird a call strike. While they were waiting for Zach Britton to heal from that Achilles tear. Brock has had his issues with left handed hitters this year. They're hitting 328 against him. Bird fouls it back. Count is no balls and two strikes. Bird is one for two. A walk, a strikeout, single. Single drove in a run back in the fifth inning. The shift is on. Three Orioles perched on the right side of the infield. Here's the pitch. Look out. Did it get him? Nope. Got out of the way that time. One and two. This looked like yesterday where he led off the tenth inning, got clipped on that right guard, but this one just missed. The one two pitch. I knew there was a changeup coming. Two and two. You know, sitting up here, it looks a lot easier to hit than it did when you actually hit it. You, you can almost sense, move him off the plate, throw him a changeup on the next pitch. Here's the 2 2. Call, strike three. Brock gets Bird looking on a fastball over the outside corner. Adam Jones got a souvenir from Brett Gardner early in the ball game. Later on, he's out with the grounds crew in deep right center field. Then hanging out down the right field line. Now he's <laughs> warming up the pitcher as Andujar fouls the pitch off. I give him credit. I mean, Brock is not a soft throwing lefty out there to go out warm him up with no mask. You know that's a guy who's used to playing all the time. He's got a lot of energy. He doesn't know what to do with himself. Exactly. He kind of reminds me when Joe Torre used to give Derek Jeter the very rare day off. Jeter was just bugging everybody. Now he's talking to Wayne Kirby, first base coach. Outside for a ball, two and one on Andujar. Making it look easy back there. Wow. What do you think, Flash? It, you nice soft hands. Whoop, whoop. A little off balance. Yeah. It's another corner. You got to spread the stance out a little bit. Spread the feet out a little. <laughs> two and two on Andujar. He's coachable. We'll be able to make something happen back there. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a little late for that. And Duhar has been hit by a pitch, struck out, and reached on the fielder's choice. Bouncing ball towards the middle. Machado crosses behind the bag and will throw him out for out number two. So Brock retires the first two Yankees here in the top of the eighth. It will bring up Clint Frazier who has kind of had a rough day of it. Three strikeouts in the first game. Two more in this game and then made contact but hit into a double play. Swing and a miss, strike one. Nobody warming up in the Yankee pen, so it looks like Gallegos will come on and pitch the eighth inning as well. There's call strike two. One and two. They'll be back here tomorrow night on Yes. John Flaherty, Meredith, and myself. Coverage starts on the network at uh, 6 p.m. outside. Two balls and two strikes. Masahiro Tanaka will come off the disabled list. And he brings with him a seven and two record. The 2 2 pitch. Count is now full at 3 and 2. You know, I think Buck Showalter can sympathize with, uh, you know, Tanaka being hurt on the bases because the same thing happened to Dylan Bundy. 
I think it was either a groin strain or he sprained his ankle running the bases. And he was out for a while. Sprained an ankle. Pitch is hit high. Hit well. Going back is Valencia in right field. Looks up. This one's off the scoreboard. Frazier rounding first. He's on his way to second. And he's in there with a double. A booming double to right field. A big reason for Frazier to smile right there. You mentioned kind of having a tough go of it today. It got behind in the count 0 and 2 on Brad Brock and kind of hung in there, hung in there, took some tough pitches and finally got something out over the plate. Looked like Clint Frazier thought maybe he had a home run. Midway up the wall, had to kick it into another gear, a two out double. Valencia played it well off the wall. He played it like uh, he's been out there quite a bit, which is not the case. There's Frazier in with the double. There's Romine taking a pitch for a call strike. Romine's found out, popped out, and struck out. Count levels and a ball and a strike. Buck Showalter, Bobby Dickerson, his third base coach, and pitches low. Two balls and a strike. Remember my dad sitting and watching games with him, and the announcer would say, but found out, popped out, struck out. My dad would say, now hit one out. <laughs> this ball is hit well in the left field. There it goes. This one is gone. Austin Romine hits one out. And the Yankees are up 6 0. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Romine with his fifth home run of the year. And it gives the Yankees a six run lead. Well, they give Frazier some credit for extending the inning and then Austin Romine against a tough right hander just hammers this ball to the seats in left field. First pitch to Walker is ball one. Here's another look. Great look from the side to swing the extension deep into the seats in left field. Walker takes a pitch for a call strike and it's one and one. Walker scored a run. He's one for two with a walk. That will drop in there for a strike. The one two pitch is in the dirt. Fouled back by Walker count is two balls and two strikes. We're going to look at this on StatCast. Romine gets into this one. Exit velocity 108.7 miles per hour at 414 feet. In the air to left field, this is going to chase. And he can't make the play. Peterson has the ball go over his head. And Walker's going to be at second base with a double. You see if Peterson's okay. He collided with the wall pretty hard. And he's limping out there in left field. Oh, 
Neil Walker showing some power, driving it the other way. Peterson really playing shallow, had a long way to go for that one. Face first into the wall. And it looks like he's going to be all right. That is a double for Neil Walker. Oof. He is shaken up, and it looks like he's going to be all right as Brett Gardner will come to the plate with two outs and a runner on second. Trying to shake it off, playing a shallow left field. Ball one to Gardner, who's had a very good night. Felt a good night with two hits. He scored two runs, driven in two. Seventh home run of the year. That is in there. I believe that home run that uh, Romine just hit was number 150 for the Yankees on the year. Pitch to Gardner is low for a ball. Two and one. Yep, they had one in the first game and two more here in the second. 150. Ball three. Brock got the first two outs here. He got Bird looking. Got Andu hard to grab out to short. Looked like he was almost home free. Frazier doubled. Romine Homer. Walker's double. Ground ball. Fair down the first baseline. Walker's rounding third. He's going to score. Gardner into second. It's seven to nothing, Yankees. They've added the extra point. Well, Brett Gardner is so hot right now, even when he doesn't hit the ball on the barrel, he finds a base hit out in front of a changeup, just able to hook it right over the bag. Davis, a good bid, just trying to knock it down. It just bounces right over his glove. So Brett Brock, Brock has been knocked down. Buck Showalter to the bullpen. The URA is up there, but uh, look at the strikeout numbers 34 in 23 and the third inning. This guy has good stuff. He has struck out the side in one inning of work four different times this year. And while we're here, I want to thank all the uh, folks that work behind the scene, our Baltimore crew here. They've done a great job once again. Always enjoy coming to Camden Yards. 
long day of baseball. And we thank all the fans at home watching as well. Here's Aaron Judge. He's had a hit in four trips. And he'll face Scott with uh, Gardner at second. Whoa! All the way back to the screen, and Gardner's going to move to third for one of the wildest pitches you'll ever see. Well, I've heard of managers telling relief pitchers first pitch you throw in warm ups, throw it to the backstop and get everybody's attention. You don't usually see this first pitch of an at bat. 97 miles an hour air, air mailed right to the screen. So Gardner's now at third. And Judge fouls it back to that same screen. Strike one. That was right out of Major League, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they film part of Major League here? Major, Major League, League two. two, yeah. Off speed pitch misses the judge and it's two balls and a strike. Two and two on judge. The Yankees have scored three times here in the top of the eighth inning. The big blow a two run home run for Austin Romine. Gardner also with an RBI double. Ooh, look out. Second time this game that the or in this double header, Phil Nevins almost been picked off at third. He's still got some quickness. <laughs> The 2 2 to judge. And it's upstairs as well, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Yankees trying to gain a split in this doubleheader. Baltimore took the opening game by a score of 5 to 4. Yankees with a 7 0 lead here in the eighth in game two. And judge will draw base on balls. And that'll bring up D.D. Gregorius. The Boston Red Sox have already won. They shut out Texas tonight at Fenway Park by a score of five to nothing. I think it was uh, Eduardo Rodriguez who started for the Red Sox tonight. Having a pretty good year. He's now 11 and three. Didi takes one up and in. Look at ball one. We mentioned the Yankees did well in the first game with runners in scoring position. Even better in this second game. Four for eight with runners in scoring position. Overall on the day, they're eight for 18. Didi checks his swing and that's upstairs. Two balls and no strikes. Three and oh. Tanner Scott having problems with the strike zone this inning. He walked Judge. And now he's 3 0 on Didi Gregorius. One pitch away from loading the bases. Inside, ball four, and the bases are loaded. The Yankees have batted around here in the eighth inning. As we're going to have a pinch runner for Didi. His long day is over. Tyler Wade's going to take over at first base. Well, this will be an interesting matchup right here. Scott with that power 98 99 mile an hour fastball in Stanton as Tyler Wade is a pinch runner. 
Stan's had a couple of hits in this game a single and a double two for four. That's high and in for a ball. Average up to 272. Ball is hit hard. Scope has it. Throws on the first. It's high. And Stanton is safe. Gardner scores. And it's 8 0 Yankees. Scope threw it high, and uh, Davis could not maintain contact with the bag. Well, John Carlos Stanton doing what he does against left handed pitching, and that's hitting the ball right on the nose. You see Davis goes up. Tries to get back on the bag. Ooh, that's a close play. It uh, looks like the uh, Orioles are going to challenge. So uh, Buck Shoulder thinks it's close enough that this could be overturned. As we take a, a look ourselves. And how tight this play was at first base. Davis up. He's off the bag. Does he get back down before Stanton touches it? So close. Oh my goodness. Is there enough there to overturn it? Another look. Whew. I don't see enough to overturn it. Yeah, I don't either. Shane Lidvicksparger, the first base umpire, and uh, this play is going to stand as called. And it will be an error charged to Scope. And I was watching Scope just before the pitch was thrown, and he moved over to take more of a shift with Stanton. If he hadn't moved over, he wouldn't have gotten that ball to begin with. So it's 8 nothing Yankees. Uh, Tanner Scott will now face the 10th Yankee to bat in this inning. It was Bird who let it off by getting called out on strikes. Ball is chopped foul down the first base side. Reggie Willits, first base coach, going to hand out a souvenir. So on that error, Brett Gardner scored the fourth run of the inning for the Yankees. Check swing, foul ball, 0 2. Curve is in there for call strike three. Second time this inning. Bird called down on strikes. But as he goes, the Yankees go. They score four runs here in the eighth and lead eight to nothing.
Well, fans, immediately after the final out, stay tuned for the WBMA Post Game as Bob, Jack, and Meredith bring you highlights and analysis of tonight's game. Plus, they'll get you ready for tomorrow's contest right here on Yes. Gallegos in for his second inning. Joey Rickard will lead it off. He's 0 for 1. And he'll take a strike from Giovanni. Tyler Wade remains in the game. He ran for Didi. Now he's playing short. Pitch is low and in the dirt. One and one. You were talking about his versatility. Uh, one of the reasons that they talked about him staying on our Hyundai scoreboard. Eight nothing Yankees. The ability to play second, third, short, outfield. And run like the wind. Rickard lines it in the left field. It's going to be a hit. Frazier cuts it off. And Rickard is on with a leadoff single here in the eighth inning against Gallegos. Here's Cisco. He's grounded out and struck out. Left-handed hitting catcher. Out of the Orioles farm system. Now back to the screen, strike one. That is in there for a strike. Sessa started for the Yankees. Was excellent. Mentioned he's from Mexico, so is Gallegos. Fouled back to the screen once again. Gallegos in the mid 90s, 94 fastball. Yankees have turned three double plays tonight. One in the fourth inning, 6 4 3, one in the sixth, 6 4 3, and one last inning, 5 4 3. They finally got Anduhar involved. Just looked up at the scoreboard. J.D. Martinez hit another home run tonight. Was he got 50? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he might get there by the end of the year. Cisco spoils another one. The count remains a ball and two strikes. He's having a heck of a year. I know he's already in the 70s and runs batted in. You know what? The Red Sox uh, gave him a pretty nice contract. So far, he's been worth every penny. He's completely changed the dynamic of that team. Just misses inside, two and two. The Red Sox were last in the league in home runs last year, and that hadn't happened in like 60 years. And this year, they're, I think they're right behind the Yankees. I think they're second. 2 2 pitch. Ball's hit in the air to center field, hit pretty well. Brett Gardner retreating to the wall, looks up, leaps, and makes the catch. Brett Gardner's been all over center field in this game. Robbing Cisco, an extra base hit. Maybe a homer. I think back earlier to the game at the bottom of the third where Machado had a rocket to right center field. Brett Gardner able to run it down. This pretty much straight up center field. Times his lead perfectly. Knows right where the wall is, reaches out for it. With his left hand, nice play. I think that was gone. 
takes a look to see where he is. Yep, that would have cleared defense. One out. And here's Beckham at the top of the order. He's lined out, walked, and struck out. This one, uh, nobody's going to catch it. Well hit the left center. This one is gone. The Orioles are on the scoreboard. It's now an 8 to 2 game as Beckham hits his second home run of the year. scoreboard on this pitch and you can see it's a breaking ball and it just backs up middle in for Beckham obviously with an eight nothing lead you're just trying to throw strikes but a, a break a ball that got away from Gallegos here's scope three hits the first game another hit in this game that's up and in for ball one Ground ball towards short. Wade has it. Straightens, throws, and that's out number two. His scope is retired. Going into today's games, the Yankees had 147 home runs, the Red Sox had 128. And they're leading Major League Baseball, both teams. The two leaders. Here's Machado. He's walked, robbed of a hit by Gardner, and then hit into a double play. Fouls it off. Broken bat roll it is short for Wade. Throw the first is in plenty of time, but the Orioles pick up two runs here in the eighth. It is now 8 2 Yankees. Eight to two. Crowd is somewhat thinned out. Peterson out of the game. Remember, he crashed into the wall. Looked a little shaken up. Trey Mancini's taking over in left field. Miguel Andujar will lead it off against Tanner Scott here tonight. And he swings at the first pitch and drives it to the gap in right center. 
And it's going to roll all the way to the wall. And Duhar, another extra base hit, will stop at second with a double. They doubles machine and Duhar just driving the ball the other way, not wasting any time. See Valencia, not really a natural right fielder. Well, interesting route to that ball, and Anduar will take it, a leadoff double. His 26th double of the year. He leads the Yankees in that category, and he's among the league leaders. Here's Frazier, had a double of his own last time up. He got the uh, four run rally started last inning. Double off the wall in right field. Working on a one for four second game. Ball and a strike on the Yankee left fielder. Interesting game going on down in Tampa Bay. Looks like they're in the bottom of the ninth there. Pitches high for a ball. Detroit and the Rays are tied at nine. Nine nine in the ninth. 40 extra base hits leads all major league rookies. It's an exciting future in Duhar. You talk all the time about doubles for young players all of a sudden start turning into home runs. Yeah. So they get a little bit older, a little bit stronger, a little bit wiser. Three and one on Frazier. Ball four, he draws a walk. Two on. Nobody out here in the top of the ninth. Don't show all they're on the phone. Let's see, yeah, they're moving around in the bullpen. And Roger McDowell, the pitcher and coach, will come out and uh, give somebody some time to warm up. You know, Flash, you were talking about uh, players hitting a lot of doubles early in their career. Manny Machado's first year. There's Machado right there at the conference at the mound. In his rookie year, well, not quite his rookie year because he had more appearances. Uh, but his second, his first full year in the major leagues, he had 51 doubles. Now those doubles, he hasn't approached that. He's gotten to 40, but that's it in another year. But now those doubles are turning into home runs. runs. Yeah, that year he hit 51 doubles, he only hit 14 homers. Now the doubles totals went down and the home run totals went up. 30 and 35, 40, 37, 33 and 33. Here's Romine Homer, his last time up, lines one. Down the right field line. This is headed for the corner. And Duhar will score easily. Being waved home and coming into. Not, nope, he's thrown out. Frazier is thrown out at the plate. So the Yankees do pick up a ninth run, but Frazier caught by an eyelash at home plate. Give Romine one RBI. Romine doing it all tonight, doing a great job with Sessa, getting him through six shutout innings. The home run now, the double, and you see Clint Frazier. Ooh. He might have got that foot in there. Uccione out of, out of position maybe a little bit, makes the call. Let's see, was the foot up over the plate? You can see that it actually made contact with uh, Cisco's foot. So it's nine to two Yankees. Romine's out at second. He now has three runs batted in in this game. Swing and a miss by Neil Walker. Strike one. Have a night, Austin Romine. Three runs batted in. Strike two on Neil Walker. It's 
Now back behind home plate. Well, the Yankees uh, appear to have bounced back nicely in the second game after losing game one to Buck Showell of the Orioles, who had lost six straight and 13 out of 14 coming into this game. They're coming into this doubleheader. He's gearing up the offense for nine runs in this game. And 15 hits. Ground ball to the left side from Machado on the backhand. He has a strong arm and he guns it across the diamond. And that's out number two. Well, the Yankee fans in attendance here. Nice round of applause for Brett Gardner. He's done it on both sides of the ball tonight. Offensively and defensively, Gardner's had a heck of a night. Now, he didn't start the first game. He did get in a bat and ground it out. Three runs batted in, a single, a home run, a double, three runs scored. I would say three tremendous plays in the outfield. And he has been, uh, well, literally and uh, figuratively the leading man for the Yankees tonight in this second game. Scott drops in a breaking ball, and it's no balls and two strikes on Gardner. Needs a triple for the cycle. Melky Cabrera was the last Yankee to do it nine years ago. And I believe Melky got a triple to complete the cycle. A lot of, lot of room in right center field. Oh my goodness, yeah. And you get the second, just don't stop. Singled in the first, homered in the fourth, doubled in the eighth. The at bat will continue. Did, did he hurt himself on that swing? Not when you're going for the cycle. What do you think, Flash? Solid line drive, just to the right of scope. Probably an 0-2 break a ball coming here. If he hangs it, you just drill it to right center field. Put your head down, <laughs> take off. Keep running until they tell you to stop. Ah, ah. This is not going to do it. But it might be a base hit. Running hard, and he's safe. Brett Gardner beats it out. His fourth hit here in the second game. Yeah, you can see Brett exhale a little bit. He earned that. Well, I've said one hit is good. As we take a look at it. A tough play for Scope. He comes in. He does everything he can do. Bare hands it. Good flip over to Davis. Guardy out of the box in great shape. Hustling down the line. Big night. One hit is okay. Two's good. Three's very good. Four is a great night. Here's Judge. Ball one. So a great night for Brett Gardner. Even greater because of his defense. First and third with two down. Judge fouls it back, a ball and a strike. 98 miles an hour from Tanner Scott. Oh, 
Line drive, right field base hit. Romine scores. Gardner will stop at second. It's 10 2, Yankees. Judge picks up a hit. And a run batted in, his 60th run batted in of the year. I want to point out one other thing. Yankees were up 9 to 2. Brett Gardner busted his butt getting down the line to get that hit, kept the inning going, got Judge another RBI. Pitching change. Orioles going to the bullpen again here in the ninth. Up against Manny Machado and the Orioles. Coverage begins at six with the Audi Batty practice today and the Chevy Yankees pregame. That's right here on Yes and streaming on Fox Sports Go. Brett Gardner heading back to second base. Masahiro Tanaka off the disabled list gets a start here at Camden Yards. He'll face the veteran Andrew Kashner. And uh, coverage begins right here on Yes at 6 p.m. Flash, Meredith, and myself will be here tomorrow night. Here's Tyler Wade getting his first hit bat. He took over for D.D. to Gregorius. Pinch ran for him, stayed in the ball game. And he swings and fouls the first pitch back to strike one. The new pitcher for the Orioles is Paul Fry, who made his major league debut on June 29th. Right here at Camden Yards, the first two batters he faced were Cole Calhoun of the Angels and Mike Trout of the Angels, and he struck them both out. Wade fouls one off, and it's no balls and two strikes. But those guys aren't here tonight. <laughs> Here's Wade. That's what he's done in, in the major leagues this year. Hit 271 down at Scranton Wilkesbury, Triple A. Two on, two out, and this ball's hit in the air towards center field. Joey Rickard over towards the gap makes the catch, and that's it. But the Yankees tack on two more. Eight and a half have been played. Yankees with a 10 2 lead. Good night for Gordon.
couple of drives of the game. Brett Gardner in the top of the fourth. That's going to be a two-run shot, part of his big evening. And then Austin Romine adds on at the top of the eighth inning. Another two-run home run. Went well over 400 feet. Those two home runs, your Land Rover drives of the game. The Yankees with 10 runs on 17 hits. Giovanni Gallego still in there. And he'll try and get the last three outs of this ball game. Mark Trumbo takes a pitch downstairs for ball one. This will be uh, Gallegos' third inning of work. As uh, Luis Sessa went the first six, gave up only three hits, struck out four, walked three, and didn't allow a run. Trumbo takes high and inside, ball two, two and oh. So it's been a long time since Sessa has been able to win a game. Pitch hit on the ground sharply. Knocked down by Ed Duhar. Straightens, throws, and gets his man. Stayed with it and makes the play. One down. Well, he really has come a long way defensively, Ed Duhar. The Yankees always knew that he could swing the bat, but would he be able to handle the job defensively? And he has proven that he can. Good reactions going to his left, knocks it down, doesn't panic, and the accurate throw. One down to take one more look. That ball was scorched. Here's Chris Davis. And he'll take the call strike from Gallegos. Davis has doubled, struck out, and walked. One for two. Yep, he's hit 159. Here in July. In the dirt, wouldn't chase, and it's a ball and a strike. One one pitch and Davis takes it high and away ball two. On deck is Danny Valencia. Davis led the league in home runs over 50 set a new team record a few years back. Ground ball to the right side into the ship for Walker from short right field Davis is out number two. The Orioles are down to their last out. Flash, we always used to have a saying. Oh, we used to have a saying. If you're going to split a doubleheader, it's better to win the second game because you can laugh in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> and it appears the Yankees are going to put this one in the win column. Valencia has wrapped into two double plays and hit a soft liner to second. And he swings and fouls the first pitch back, strike one. After it's all said and done, too, with the doubleheader, you always worry about the bullpen and its usage, but uh -huh. Yankees have gotten through this one in pretty good shape. Gallegos, obviously, the three innings. Sessa, the sixth shutout. There's two relievers in the first game, so Aaron Boone coming out of it in pretty good shape. One ball and one strike on Danny Valencia is. Valencia had the big hit in the first game of three run home. Ooh, that got a piece of Romine right off the shin guard, maybe the kneecap. Chris Guccione checks on Romine. Take another look. The foul ball straight down on top of the knee. Although you have the shin guard, you're still going to feel that one. Yankee fans applauding here. Looking forward to the end of this one. Not quite yet. Buck Showalter saw the. Uh, Losing streak end in the first game, and now maybe another losing streak in the offing. Ball has popped up in the air to left center field. Let's see who's going to make the play here. Frazier calling off Gardner. The left fielder makes the play, and that's it. 
It is a split for Aaron Boone and the Yankees. Brett Gardner with a fantastic ball game. As the Yankees win by a score of 10 to 2, and in doing so, pound out 17 hits to split this long day's journey in tonight here in Baltimore. So they take game two. Gallegos with a good job on the mound, works the final three innings. And Luis Sessa, for the first time in a long time, picks up the win. Gallegos gets a save. So we'll be back with more and wrap this one up from Camden Yards. Once again, the final, the Yankees win 10-2 and split the doubleheader.